Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Well, hi everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm still in Thaxted this week, um, painting a, a different uh, angle to the Guildhall. It's a more front-on view, um, which um, I decided that um, uh, I needed to have a look at a couple of angles of this lovely old building in this beautiful Essex town. Uh, it's been there many, many years, and uh, it really appeals to me. It's the structure of the building, uh, it's the tones within the buildings, it's the lovely beams. You've got the church this time, in this version, you've got the church on the left. Uh, of the um, of the main uh, building, uh, decided to get closer uh, so that I didn't uh, include the phone box. And it's quite unusual to have uh, um, to see these phone boxes in villages and towns these days here in the UK. Um, so I moved past that uh, to get closer a closer view got a lovely street lots of old buildings really of interest uh, to to any artist particularly um, this view I decided that uh, my second version would be this view um, there's the finished painting um, that I'm just about to sign so if you'd like to see the complete demonstration Well, for my second painting of this um, guild hall that I visited yesterday, um, I'm going to, um, I had to move into my studio because uh, it was so hot, uh, um, even in my uh, undercover area. So um, I need to paint actually in the studio until that gets too hot. So the first thing I'm going to do is to damp up my colours with clean water. Uh, <clears throat> the palette is a little, has some colour on there from previous, from yesterday's painting. Um, so I've damped all the colours that I will use, all the colours that I ever use. Uh, and I'm not going to use them all, obviously. Um, and there's my list of colours, burnt umber, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, burnt sienna, raw sienna, cadmium yellow, uh, Prussian blue or Windsor blue, whichever I decide to squeeze in there, both the same to me, uh, cobalt blue, ultramarine, French ultramarine, cadmium red, then I've got cadmium lemon, light red, burnt umber, Indian Red, Olysian Crimson, I do have a Payne's Grey, and there is another Lemon Yellow there. <clears throat> but basically they are my colours that I ever use. Well for my second painting of this um, Guild Hall that I visited yesterday, um, I'm going to, um, I had to move into my studio because uh, it was so hot uh, um, even in my uh, undercover area so um, I need to paint actually in the studio until that gets too hot. Now if you watched my previous video <coughs> I um, it was a really hot day when I visited um, Thaxted and um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to go in with Prussian blue <coughs> in a fairly strong form uh, straight onto dry paper. Now it's going to dry extremely quickly today so consequently we need to move fairly sharply and notice how I'm using a very large brush and that, <coughs> when it's very, very hot, 
is the secret to achieving a clean wash of colour. Now I'm going to paint around the top of the sorry, here we are. <coughs> I'm going to paint it around the top of the building uh, and the overhang. I always got lovely big overhangs these buildings. And I'm going to keep the same depth of colour right the way through to the tops of those buildings. Got to just keep an eye on um, other parts of the, the drying process. That uh, There we go. So let's pull that up and then we paint down for this one. Now as the brush runs out of colour, it will become, it dries extremely quickly. Now I'm painting around the church tower um, and down as far as the green area there and just up around that tap that part of the church tower just take that right the way up and that could very well be just drawn in there we go and then finally we need to take the roof of that and down into the greenery that side and I'm going to use the point of the brush just to try and indicate something in the top of that church tower. It's a very thin but very tall tower. Now I'm taking moisture off the brush and just lifting some of the colour away before it dries too much. <coughs> and that is all I'm going to do for the sky. But while that is drying, I'm going to put in um, some green. So I'm using cadmium yellow now. Remove some moisture from the brush. Cadmium yellow with the blue and create a sort of like a blue green, a blue distant green, because I want that to flood up into that sky area. Because there's a lot of greenery going on here and I need that to show there and there and there. There we go, that's nice. And oh shall we have a little bit of this here just before it dries? There is a tree there and there's another one there just before it dries. Not worried if it cauliflowers up because um, <clears throat> that gives a nice top to the trees then I'm dropping in a yellow area there so a little more cadmium in the mix and that's going to spring up into that like that it's good and that then comes down remember all the darker tones can go in later then I'm using raw sienna now, just dropping a bit of raw sienna in. It's just to ring the changes of green really. Um, little touches of white perhaps. They can always be painted out if they don't work um, more near the end. There we are, that's pretty good. I've had to leave the door open in the studio today for obvious reasons. <coughs> And then we're going in with lots of blue and the raw sienna. Because all of a sudden I want a dark area, which is that area there. And allow that paint to flood down. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop in to the top of that and to the right hand side of that. There we are. Just to give, see how it gives a variation of green. Uh, and to me, that uh, um, really sets that little scene up for that little area just going around the outside of that building and then I'm going to leave 
white jagged edge there because I want that to be part of the building of the greenery that's in sunlight coming from the left behind that building and while it's still damp I'm going in again to that lower area just to let that bleed up and just put in some harder edges there because I just fancy doing that a little edge there that's it so that more or less completes the back edge or the lining to that uh, um, the sky and um, greenery we need to allow that to dry and that won't take long in a day like today now while that is drying I'm going to put in some road colour and um, we're going to use let's go into this there are, I've got ultramarine in there um, let me just turn that so you can see ultramarine in there um, and I'm starting off with ultramarine um, oh that's let's do that there because that is the far distance and that's where the light is coming in so the road goes up and round the corner got to try and um, hold that line if we can um, like that and what I do there I'm going to do there because that's the path that goes up the hill around there <clears throat> that's good now I'm adding a little light red which I've already got in the palette from yesterday when I was painting so that goes in next now I'm trying to keep this very light and what I'm going to do I'm going to try with the point of the brush to pick around these figures for no reason other than to keep them white paper until I decide whether they're going to be lighter or darker than the rest of the um of the colours really a bit more water a bit more red notice how I like this light red into the road in the foreground got to cut, try and move fairly quickly um, here we are then we got the dog which may very well be somewhat darker there we are then I'm going to go in with raw sienna now into that red so it's going to be a little darker but and a little bit sort of uneven sort of get, the, get that gravelly feel from and just introduce that into that damp area not too much and all of a sudden we have something for the buildings to sit on Now the pavements either side are a little more grey so I'm adding a little more ultramarine and light red for the pavement area but we do have a I can just about see a curb stone there and if you notice I've left that because I do feel that that's required another little area a bit wide there but we'll attend to that as the um, painting progresses and then here do you know what I'm going to do I add a little bit of burnt sienna because it's a different type of stone there and I'm just going to make it so it blends with that there we are and just put in some lines like that just to pull your eye towards that area and it warms up that foreground <clears throat> now as that dries it will all soften back so let's not get panicky about um, um, things that don't quite look right at this moment but what I'm going to do I'm now going to paint the roof areas and we do have some um, edging um, that would be lead flashing around the top um, but other than that it's 
quite a bright red roof so I'm going to leave that edge flashing but other than that I'm just going to use for the red tile roofing purely light red and it has a funny sort of kink you know sort of a laid back sort of almost Dutch style sort of feel which is not traditional I don't think for this part of Essex but um, But either way, it's how it is, and uh, it go, gives it a lovely sort of style to it all. So I'm painting in and around like that, joining them up. There is a gap in the middle. Um, so that's that nice red tile roofing that you can see. One a little lighter than the other. It's fine, not too concerned about that. Um, we can't see anything going back because we are lower down um, so that's not a problem good so that's that roof while we're here I'm going to add a little burnt umber with that to create um, the um, oh, the roof there because that's also red tiled but if you notice I've painted it lighter and more brown than that one there because that sets it back then I mix in with a little of the blue that I have um, to paint, paint uh, that one there lighter than the background that one there And that part of the roof there that lays back and now this one I'm going to put a little bit of red in that because it faces the sunlight more and that runs at that sort of angle and what have we got here hmm not quite sure what I've got here but I'm going to put another roof in there like that because that's how it is um, other than that that's looking good oh we've got a grey so a bit more blue in that for this slate roof here notice how I'm leaving an edge for two reasons actually um, one is for the fact that I don't want that to bleed back in it's still a little damp but also um, I want that to remain um, nice and fresh Right, now I'm going to use cadmium yellow with a little of the ultramarine that I've got in my palette. So the way I keep using little bits of colour that I've got in my palette. Actually, I'm using a lot more of the, red, of the yellow. So I'm trying to use up more or less what I've got really. And uh, oh right, that more or less comes down there like that. I'm just blocking in, really. I suppose you could call it. Um, and that gives a nice little sparkle. I think that's probably sufficient for that to give any suggestion that the light uh, will be coming from that direction. Good. Now I've quickly cleaned a little space there because I want to pick up this pink area because uh, that building has a lovely what we call Suffolk pink or Essex pink I suppose but because it's Essex but there you go um, so I'm using Olizum crimson and a touch of raw sienna because that I think gives it a bit more of an orangey pink and then we come down with that I'm going to paint around these windows it's not vital but it's something that and at the moment it's going to be lighter than the um, than that background well I think it always will be to a certain extent 
Um, right, there's a, just a there's a portico there of some sort, and then there's a white window. Uh, oh, this is the lower part of the window, and we have another lower part there. But apart from that, oh right, okay, you may see that part of the wall as well. Because run out of picture, we're not too concerned with that. And it's all begin to come together very nicely. Now the beams on this old building is limed wash. I think that's what they call that, uh, which is the traditional way of um, of preserving these old oak beams. Although they go very, very hard, so they don't need a great deal of preser preservation. I'm using burnt umber with a little of the um, ultramarine there. And what have we got? Right, we've got the main beam there. And we've got another main beam there. It's very light. It'll be very light. Now we've got... Have we got a beam running under there? Of course we have. That's the supporting beam. Yes, so that's the beam that runs under there. And then we have these... Uh, oh, and the beam that runs under there. So it's quite wide. So let's just pull that brush across like that. Reload. Then we have one, two, three for smaller beams there like that big one in the center like that like that whoops uh, if you go a little bit offline the good thing about these old buildings is that it uh, it's really all in keeping with the um, with the building itself so we're not really too worried if we do go offline and of course the window then has its beam surrounds which are quite light that's it there's another one there okay and then we just continue um, the process really working our way down with all these um, beams that can get a bit repetitive but um, Oh, and that springs out and comes back and then we've got one there and these are arched which is a, a definite feature of this build or indeed any of these builds really I suppose like that it's not the sort of thing that you get well I don't get perfect but um, I know that in the whole scheme of things, it's not going to make a big difference to the final painting. So, um, all being well, um, we just um, we just keep painting away, really. And then that tucks back again. Oh, and we've got then the support for the windows. That's also got a beam across there. Windows go in. I'm leaving that side white, so I'm putting that in, and yeah, yeah, this, it's, it's quite light actually, this uh, limed um, part, which um, I love painting this building, it's the second time um, that I've painted this, um, because I just love painting this lovely old building. It's um, something that... Um, right, just a bit there where the whole thing sits on. There you go. I just love painting this lovely old building in the centre of Thaxted. Now I'm going to paint in the brick surround that supports the complete building. And that is just some um, colour that I've got in the palette. So that goes across. I need just to level that up. There is a step there to get up into the building. And then some planting areas. I think that's more or less levelled the whole thing up. 
then we have the path so I'm going to start off with a path area like that and then we're going to add a little bit more of the red and I'm going to pull that in so that it sort of like marries up you can see it hanging there but it is um, marrying up with the other color that we've got there so you can definitely see where it sits just a little stronger red for just the top of that just to show that up a bit and very very weak red for that that's in the shad in the sunlight that's in real strong sunlight notice how i've tried to keep this area white at this stage now for the windows i'm going to use a little uh, ultramarine with a little uh, light red mainly ultramarine and i'm losing quite a bit from the brush and we've got individual glazed areas there and i'm going to try and paint those in very quickly because they do need to be painted in extremely quickly um, then we've got an arched glazed area there and an arched glazed area there notice I'm not painting all of it at this moment because we'll wait and see because we've got the light coming from the left so it already starts the feeling of a shadow there we are and that's those windows in once you can start to put windows in then you're beginning to get uh, um, somewhere near what you're looking for really now I'm also going to use this for suggestion of windows there there and there there's another large window there and uh, we've got a shop front there so we'll put that in as the shadow area large window there take a bit of moisture off the brush with the point of the brush I'm trying to put these in really um, as uh, as loosely as possible because if you start to get fussy with things then you tend to um, create detail that we're not looking for we're not looking for detail there we are that's good enough for distant buildings and uh, what do we got here nothing much we may have not really sure what we've got here but we may have a window there window there perhaps not sure um, let's just pull them away and just lose them there we are apart from that we've just got windows that are a little stronger um, there just about see a touch of a glazing leave plenty of white and then we've got a, a glazed area there glazed area there and another one underneath to the seal uh, I think we've got a glazed area there another one there um, oh I tell you what we have got add a bit more red to that so I'm mixing in with where I've got the red because we have a portico there that's got a, um, a tile roof to it so now we're beginning to get in a um, little bit of detail um, but not too much uh, what have we got here oh we've got a shop front haven't we so we've got that there got windows there window there but then we've got a door there and then we've got windows above one would presume sure there's windows there most of that will be shadowed anyway um, good <coughs> now I'm going to deal with uh, the light coming underneath the actual um, arched areas now for that mix I've used French ultramarine 
and burnt umber. Now for start off I'm going to use more burnt umber um, and that's the arch. In now this is the dark area inside that we can see. Okay, we've got to remember there's light coming through arches here. So we come down as far as that. It's a nice arched area like that. And then down there like that. And all the time that got to hold that slope. And there's more brown in this mix. But certainly we get up to the right height. Um, roughly the same. Got to move fairly quickly because as I said it's fairly warm here in Essex at the moment so I can't paint outside um, so I'm having to paint inside my studio but it's also very warm there we are pull that down and pull that round I'm going to paint around that figure because I'd, I'd just like to see a figure inside uh, that's admiring or whatever looking at the um, at what's going on on the board there's a board in there with local information on I believe good so that comes down to there then I'm going to clean the brush add more blue now and plenty of water and that will give us hopefully that feeling that the light is coming through into the lower part because it gets cooler more blue where the light is entering and then we just use a damp brush to pull it all down and with the board at an angle that will naturally drizzle down like that and then a dry brush just to finish it and lift it away because we want that to be a dry brush work as you get the light coming through and into that lower area Look at that. and it gives that lovely sense that you've got light coming in from the left hand side not too far in not as far as there although that I can lift away a touch I think just to give a feeling of that sense um, these will these beams inside are lighter than the background because they are not light um, um, beams at the back of the build um, but um, because we can see through because that slopes and finishes there and um, maybe yes and while I said that I've just realized that I've got a film we can just about see that um, that beam on that other side finishing there like that there we are that's it we can see where those beams finish there we are that's pretty much all you need to do to create those lovely beams they can all be adjusted if necessary while those are drying I'm just going to put in the brown um, planters I'm not painting the sunlit side leaving that white at the moment so that's the brown planters gone in now just to finish the windows off I'm using just Prussian blue very very weak right into any of the lower areas that are not that haven't got any glazing um, that I've not painted in and see how you're getting a 3d feel well not 3d 2d if you like but either way you're getting a sense that we've got additional light onto that uh, those um, uh, glazed areas really I think they're leaded light areas but even so it does enhance that window I think right now I'm going to paint in something that not I really do but I'm going to paint in a figure 
to give scale on the right hand side here now I'm painting this figure in uh, without any drawing so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a chancy thing to do um, but um, hey ho if you don't take a chance you know what you can achieve and uh, the figure is actually um, walking across the road it is a very hot day so we have short sleeves on that figure like that and then we have brown shorts or blue shorts shall we have blue it's a bit of blue shorts that come like that and like that yeah I'm doing this all with this large brush that I think probably um, is the answer. I'm using burnt sienna now because this figure has obviously got a bit of tan. Standing there and the arms too. and extend those legs until you get the right height good allow that to dry let's not get too fussy with that at this moment but I think that's probably brought it into scale I'll make them taller by pulling the shadow down to about there if I need um, to make them taller uh, or larger but I don't want them too large in that foreground so um, that's that now I might as well just while I'm doing this just fill in my other figures so we've got a, a blue grey figure there we've got a yellow yellowy red figure there Let's just lift some of that away. Try and keep your figures as simple as possibly possible. I'm not um, I'm not a great figure painter, as you probably know. Um, but um, when you're doing street scenes, it's one of them things that you really can't get away from. I don't think. gently teasing see the way I've got there the white faces looking towards each other so they're talking this one could very well be walking away so that's uh, and that figure may be in shadow not really sure at the moment and the the, the real bright red is saved for the figure that's actually inside because I want the, that figure to be to draw the eye like that so several little figures going on ticking around um, just to give life to this lovely village location I'm going to put in the lovely brown dog and um, don't want to get too too complicated with this um, not always my um, there again my best um, subjects to paint but um, I think that's come off pretty reasonable yeah it's only got three legs but just give it another one yeah oh, well, there you go we'll leave it at that good so we've got five figures one dog now all we're going to do now is to mix some green shades for the planting 
it was uh, it is summer there so that's the planting that's the green leafing of the planting and then when that goes dry I'll put some colour on there and that'll be that it's just a matter of blocking in as I say now I'm going to put some shadow work in um, just to start building up tone and shape and my shadow is ultramarine blue and olizon crimson now to start not going to be too dark and it's got more crimson in because I'm going to shade this pink building so I'm going to leave just a bead of that colour on the outside edge but apart from that we're going to paint right the way down because this is all in shadow mm -hmm. and you just give one clean wash of colour and you leave it you don't need to mess around at all um, because it's getting reflection from the road in front the shadow that's cast will be considerably uh, darker now I'm adding more blue now because that building is really warm I'm going to put a blue purple shadow in and that is going to be where is our blue purple shadow right so we've got a cast like that yeah let's just add a little more blue to that and it's quite a deep shadow this one runs across like that down the edge and away like that it doesn't have to be straight because these old buildings aren't straight we have another shadow that runs across like that try not to be tempted to go over again just go a little higher with that that's it it's perfect there we are doesn't matter if we've got a bit of a lip there it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect um, indeed it doesn't doesn't really require perfection these old buildings and that goes up there like that and round I'll attend to that shortly it's hanging over a bit there but I'll lift that away and then we have an area there this area comes down a little further this just a little further this just a little further even more and then we have one two three four five six right so we've got another arch there that I failed to put in no problem I'll bang that in shortly just running over that again just to because I've taken a little bit longer with that there we go there we are and that when it dries will give you that lovely glow and now I'm adding more picking up a bit of other colour now from the palette because this is in shadow but it's not the same shadow It's a different shadow and in actual fact if I go around that that'll probably take that out so that mistake has some um, sort of pulled in helped quite considerably just leave a bead of white down there there we are and of course you've got the casting shadows to go in too later on um, right now we add little raw sienna to this with the blue and we have a shadow there in the overhang of that that's in shadow because it's overhanging and so is that oh and so is that 
little bit of overhang shadow there you can see the depth of that window that uh, going back now this is interesting because this is rounded so what I'm going to do for this I'm going to paint that like that so that's quite shaped and then quickly I'm using a damp brush to soften that and pull that down because that is the effect you get from an area that's actually rounded in shape so it's a soft shadow into that deeper edge there just like that and that picks up the white of the corner of that building now we use clean water and allow that to spill down Look at that. but that is all in shadow forgot to put that in but that also shows up the corner of that building like that then there's a shadow under there there's a shadow under the overhang there um, yeah, it's all beginning to come into lovely strong sunlight and while we have this colour let's put a shadow there a shadow there like that shadow under there overhang shadow and that's also going to be in shadow too like that maybe cast a shadow on there well I'll cast a shadow on there anyway whether it does or not we're not sure the art of this one is to keep it fresh and clean because this is what I'm attempting to do oh there's a shadow there inside that window maybe a door shadow there just a little hint maybe a, a figure there perhaps and another smaller figure there just use the point I, I love using these large brushes because they um I don't know they, they, they just make it uh, so much much more interesting to uh, to paint um, right now the tower of the church now this is a tricky one because I don't want to make it any wider than it is I'm going up a little higher than I originally had and that's going to be like that so that's painted that in spire look at that shines in sunlight perfect then using a damp brush I'm going to paint up to the other side so that it just gives a, a married effect and then soften it as it goes into the trees because that way it takes away from the um you know the real strength of it lovely good we'll leave that at that now finally it's those well finishing touches but i've got lots more shadow work to come in but what i want to do is to put in the dark gutter or a darker line underneath there which is in effect the gutter but it just it just gives it a an additional sort of darkness to that and I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to use burnt umber and ultramarine I used Indian red and ultramarine and into that I'm putting burnt umber with a bit more ultramarine because I don't think I've really got quite the punch that I 
require that's better yeah that's more like it let's get that real punch oh and we must see that roof going that gutter heading back because it's got an angle on something very important that little edge there now um, what I'm going to do with these windows I'm going to put a, an additional line down that back edge because that gives them an extra depth like that and what I'm also going to do is just just tease a line across the base like that then I'm going to tease a line across the, the sill area of these windows. Like that. Then I'm going to, we may just see the inside of that beam just standing out like that. Probably wouldn't, but I think enhances the look of the frontage like that yeah I think that that helps um, considerably and just do the same to all of them don't get too bogged down too fussy because that was what I was doing there far better to uh, use a little bit of sort of license just show a little bit of the top of that and other than that you come down like that and I'm actually going to show the edge of that too and then we have supports on every beam so I'm going to put those in one two three four five six seven there go then we have a little darker line underneath that helps there again to give that um lift that away there we go that ad additional there we are really dark in that sunlit area like that makes the old building really stand forward that's why i love painting these lovely old buildings because um they do you know you can really get into the painting of them there's so much, you know, you look at them to start and you think there's very little there. But there sure isn't. There's an awful lot there um, once you look. But the art is not to put everything in, which is not an easy thing to do. Because you're, you, you know, the longer you look, the more you can see. But of course, you don't want to see too much, um, because if you do, it um, is not what you're looking for, basically. Just tidying one or two edges up here, um, or gutter sort of there. Mm -hmm. Right, what have we got? Hmm, okay, that's fine, yep. Bit of shadow there. Oh, right, now we've got to get a little bit of texture onto that. That's a little strong. Let's just um, put a secondary shadow there. I just feel that these there is a door there somewhere I know a secondary shadow some windows there 
and something a little deeper there. But of course we mustn't take away from the lovely building itself. And that's where we have to really um, be careful. That's why I wanted to bring that building into strong sunlight. Um, then a, a weaker shadow because we do have um, the sense of a weaker shadow just the other side of that those two pillars there those posts that support they're supporting you see um, so that's good okay there is a gutter running down there but I'm not going to put that in because that would spoil the look of the light effect at the right hand side uh, oh and within that shadow this side we do have um, a little bit of suggestion of darker um, shadow in places and of course uh, there is a, like a gutter line of some sort there and then there's an overhang there um, that does have a bit of ornamental supports that these old buildings do have might as well just suggest that um, white door uh, a bit more on that window perhaps just as a suggestion there so you, by killing that off you don't get that doesn't attract from the real main focal point uh, of that uh, building. There is a bit of leading that creates, that will enhance that I think, if we just shape that up like that. Yep, that just gives it that extra bit of interest that it never had. There, like that. Perfect. Do you know, I think we've just got the more broad shadows to put in. Let's, let's put some shadows on the figures. Let's, let's do that next. Because they, um, it's quite important that we get shadow work down sections of these figures I'm not going to put a shadow on that figure oh maybe just down that edge there there we go uh, these two figures are having a rare old chin wag like that and this figure is walking over to them um one di one wonders whether they know each other and they're going for a coffee who knows Oh, and I've not done my flowers. So let's pick up a bit of red. I like a bit of red there. By the flowers and a little bit of yellow too. Um, and that's sort of give us a flowery feel. I'll allow that to dry and wipe some shadow in that very shortly. Now we're going for the shadow work that's cast, because the light coming from the left, that's cast across the uh, road. And for that, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cast a shadow up there like that, and then across, then it comes towards us, it's round the corner, and then we have another shadow like that. There we go. I made a bit more blue now. And then that building casts a shadow more or less like that. And for this shadow, I'm using Indian red and ultramarine blue for this lovely casting shadow that is going to be somewhat deeper 
in color than the original note. So I'm painting across like this and then I'm just going to tuck out a bit there just to give that a corner, building corner. I don't know, it could be a building out of picture, something to that extent. Like that. Okay. Right you are. Now, there will be a shadow from that figure. So this is going to be very narrow. Like that. This will be casting a shadow like that and a little bit of shadow down the back edge of that flower pot like that so they stand out in clear strong sunlight now shadow for the dog figures and this little chappy here looking up towards the building and then I'm going to be a little weaker not too weak with the shadow that's cast from this work from here we've got shadow running across it could very well run up the path a little like that and then it goes like that and it tucks back like that then of course uh, that building creates a shadow too and that will go around there then this building creates another shadow and what I'm going to do th those figures are going to be in sunlight so I'm leaving those light and putting the shadow in across like that don't want to come too far, far forward with that shadow, otherwise it won't look right. There we are. When you paint these shadows on, you've got to allow them to completely dry. Before you start, if you want to model them, they have to be dry. Good. Leave that at that. Now just to finish off, I'm using Burnt Umber with a little Ultramarine in um, and um, uh, what have we got here? Let's just put a little idea of where that stands oh, and there would be a shadow from that steps. So I'll put that there. But other than that, it sits like that. See it? And what I'm going to do, use a, a dry... A, slightly damp brush just to soften that so it's not like a hard stark edge not like a shadow um that's better there we go then we have uh the curb stone that runs like that and there again try not to put it in too solid uh, once it goes in really solid then um, never looks quite right and just a suggestion within the shadow area perhaps and a, another little suggestion here like that nothing nothing that's going to detract from the overall picture tell you what I want to do a little bit of burnt umber just paint it onto that front edge because that is light brown that's it okay now I think that's dry enough because I just want to show one or two little details perhaps for that that portico area um, there is some planting here um, that uh, stands oh there's a pot that stands there and another pot that stands there and we've got some planting on there but notice how I'm not giving this any colour because that has only got to be suggested 
uh, don't want to track the eye to that uh, to that area. Then we have the path area that comes down, goes behind there like that. and tucks across like that then we get the sections of curb stones that we can see to a certain extent then they just disappear uh, up the back now this is a section of gravel stones so it, it, it gives texture within the shadow area and that then tucks around the corner like that, comes towards you, and then you've got sort of gravelly feel to it. So you use a dark colour, just dragging across with a dry brush, particularly in that bottom right hand corner there. Not quite dry, but it's, um, it seems to be working quite well. And just before we finish, I think we could do with my old favourite just something just to, to, to take away from this. I just feel we want a little bit of dull shadow into the foreground. I'm just pulling that into it just to take the light out of that foreground and that needs very little attention we have the belfry openings we're going to put those in because I'm sure somebody would suggest that other than that we need to leave well alone Well, I've taken the surround away, as you can see, and that is what I'd class as version number two of this lovely old building, the Guildhall, um, in the village of Thaxted here in the UK. But it just needs signing. So I'm going to sign bottom right hand corner in the paint that I've used, which I think is the normal thing to do and um, so that's version number two all complete and uh, in sunlight really because of the washes and colors I've used if you have enjoyed watching this video then please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you all for watching and we'll see you all again next time